Today in our 2008 Chevy Silverado 2500, we'll be installing the Airlift Load Lifter 5000 Air Helper Springs, part number AL57275. Now, before we begin our install, we're gonna go ahead and measure the ride height of our truck. With no additional weight in the pickup bed, from the ground to the bottom of the wheel well, we have 41 inches. Next, we're gonna go ahead and add approximately 2,500 pounds of weight to the truck bed. With the weight added, it brings the ride height down to 37 and three quarters of an inch. Now we'll go ahead and run it through our test course to check handling and ride quality with the excess weight. With the excess weight, we lose steering stability and the ride quality is rough and bumpy. Now let's go ahead, install the Air Lift Load Lifter 5000 Air Helper Springs. And with air in our helper springs, we'll now go ahead and reinstall our 2,500 pounds. With the weight re-added and air in the air springs as necessary, it brings it back to our normal ride height of approximately 41 inches. Now we'll go ahead and run it through our test course again. Bringing the vehicle back up to ride height and helping control the weight, it brings back our steering stability and ride quality. Now let's go ahead and show you how to install the Air Lift Load Lifter 5000 Air Helper Springs. Now to begin our install, I recommend to go ahead and lower and remove the spare tire to give yourself a little more working room. Next, we're gonna go to our workbench and start assembling the air spring. To begin our assembly, we'll take the airbag and two roll plates, one for the bottom and one for the top. We'll go ahead and line up the pre-drilled holes in the roll plate with our attachment points in the airbag. Now starting with the top of the airbag, we'll then take the 90 degree elbow provided with the install kit and install it into the top of the bag at the fitting. We'll first install it hand tight and then as per the instructions, an additional one and a half turn from hand tight. Now with the fitting in place, we'll need to install the upper bracket. As per the instructions for the driver's side, we'll be using the two slots marked A and go ahead and use our paint marker to mark them as the driver's side. We'll use a 3 8 bolt, split lock washer, and flat washer going through the upper bracket, through the roll plate, and into the airbag. We'll install both of these fasteners finger tight, but leaving it loose enough that we can still adjust the upper bracket as needed along the slots. Next, we'll start assembling the lower bracket. For the driver's side, We'll first take a 5 16 bolt and put it through the pre-drilled hole in the corner of the bracket. Then we'll take a 3 8 bolt and nylon lock nut, go through the center inboard hole of our lower bracket. We'll go ahead and tighten it down. Next, we'll take two 3 8 carriage bolts, put them down through the large pre-drilled holes in the upper bracket, fitting them into the lower square holes that they'll line up with. Now with our hardware in place, we'll go ahead and take the bracket and attach it to the bottom of the airbag. We'll use the 3 8 flathead screw bolts to secure it. We'll go ahead and tighten them down. Now with the pre-assembly of the airbag done, we'll move back to the truck. We'll need to remove the manufacturer's bump stops. To do that, we're gonna spray each of the bump stop studs with some spray lubricant, and then remove the nut from the stud. Once we remove both nuts, we'll go ahead and remove the bump stop completely, as it will not be reinstalled. Next, we'll need to create a little more distance between the manufacturer's bump stop plate and the bottom of the frame. We'll go ahead and take a jack and raise up the vehicle, taking some weight off the suspension. Now we can go ahead and take our airbag assembly that we pre-assembled and set it into position, noting that the tabs of the lower bracket will fit around the bump stop plate at the top of the axle. Once we get one around it, we'll walk the other one from the inboard side around the bump stop plate. Then we'll line it up with the frame and upper bracket. Next, we'll install two 3 8 bolts along with a flat washer for each going down through the frame and through the upper bracket, reusing the pre-drilled holes in the frame 
from the bump stop fasteners. We'll secure each of these fasteners with a flat washer and nylon lock nut provided with our install kit. Once they're in place, we'll adjust it so that the upper bracket keeps the airbag centered to the frame and lower bracket. Then we can go ahead and tighten down our fasteners. We'll first tighten down the 3 8 bolts to the frame, and then the 3 8 bolts that secure the upper bracket to the airbag. Next, we'll move to the lower bracket. We'll take the axle strap, fit it over the carriage bolts, and bring it up to the axle where we'll install a flat washer and nylon lock nut. Once in place, we can go ahead and tighten it down. Tighten it down evenly, front to back of the axle. All right, now with our airbag secured, we'll repeat the same process on the passenger side. Next, I'll move back over to the driver's side where we'll install the brake line bracket onto the 5 16 bolt we put into the lower bracket earlier and secure it with the nylon lock nut. Then we'll install the brake line clip around the parking brake cable and secure it with a second 5 16 bolt and nut. Now we can go ahead and tighten it down. This will help keep the parking brake cable from interfering with the airbag. Now we're ready to install the air line for our airbags. First, we're gonna go ahead and pre-drill two 5 16 holes for our inflation valves. We're gonna choose a spot here in the bumper near the license plate light. We'll go ahead and drill the holes first. Then we'll prep the line by finding the center of the line and cutting it in half. We'll take one end in the inflation valve, install a nut and star washer. We'll then put it through the pre-drilled hole with the inflation valve facing out. To secure it, we'll install the rubber washer, flat washer, and a second nut and tighten it down. We'll repeat the same process for the other side. Now with both inflation valves installed and secured, we'll go ahead and route the lines. Keep in mind when routing your lines, stay away from any moving components such as steering or suspension or excessive heat such as the exhaust. We're gonna go ahead and take our line and route it inside the frame channel and then ultimately to the airbag. Once we get to the airbag, we'll cut off any excess air line and then install it into the inflation valve. To install it in the inflation valve, we'll line it up with the inflation valve and firmly press it into place and then pull back to lock it in position. Here on the passenger side, we're gonna use the line protector that'll help protect the line as it passes through the pre-drilled hole in the frame, and then install the air line into the inflation valve. Now with both lines installed, then we'll then use the zip ties provided with the install kit to secure the line. Special note, behind the bumper, I've left an extra loop of bear line that could have potentially been cut off. The reason for this is should we ever decide to go back and add an airlift load controller and compressor system, we'll have some line to work with and maneuver as necessary. Next we'll install our heat shield. Our heat shield can be custom bent to fit the tailpipe. Now to bend it, we'll simply take the tabs of the heat shield, bend them in, and then flatten them out to create an attachment point. We'll then use the wire loom clamps provided with the install kit to secure the heat shield to the tailpipe. I'll tighten up the clamp a little bit to take some of the slack or looseness out of the clamp and then slide my heat shield into position. We'll slide the clamp over the tab and then tighten it down.
Next, we'll go ahead and supply air to the inflation valve and check for leaks. Once we've aired it up, we'll then go ahead and take a soap and water solution and spray each one of the connection points for our airline. Now we've checked for leaks, we're ready to hit the road. And that does it for the install of our Airlift Load Lifter 5000 Air Helper Springs, part number AL57275 on our 2008 Chevy Silverado 2500.